Okay, first of all, thank you, Alison, and thank you, guys, for inviting us. Uh, I do apologize because I'm in the middle, if there's music disturbance, I'm in the middle of my son's wedding rehearsal. I got the 2 o'clock and the 3 o'clock all screw up. So <laughs> I thought Singapore is a 2 o'clock thing, so I do apologize. Okay, Project Dignity was started about 10, 15 years ago. The idea is very simple, to give the dignity to the disabled and disadvantaged through vocation. So it's based on four basic principles aligned to what Alison just presented earlier. First, in order to give them dignity, you must give them the skill. Don't give them the fish. Teach them how to fish. And to do that, I started something called the Hawker Training Center. Now, you go to any ASEAN country, the first person you see is the guy selling on the street, roadside selling hawker food, correct? But do you know there's no training center for hawkers anywhere in the world? Because people, when they open a culinary school, they want to earn money. Nobody ever thought of earning money from hawkers. But now, hawker is UNESCO side. So the sec first thing I must skill, and to skill them, I need to write the curriculum. I spent two years writing the entire curriculum for how to run a hawker store. Then after that, I got the Singapore government approval. This is the intellectual property. After scaling them, step two, create job for them. Because we are job creator. Once a person has a job, he has a living, he got his life. So the idea now is to create jobs. I don't know whether you hear me, the music is bad, blasting at the back. So create job for them. If I cannot create job, that means I place you in uh, different cafes, hawker center. If I cannot create job, I create businesses. So the first one I create was Dignity Mama. Now, we are solving problems. When a mother gives birth to a child with disability, everybody focuses on the child. Wrong. You focus on the mother. You see, as a woman, the relationship with the child will never be broken. Some of them, even the husband run away. Right. Mother-in-law, why you ask, give you a kid who is disabled? So the mother suffer a lot of depression, whatever it is. And they always have to stick with the child. So what we do, this project is to open a second-hand bookshop selling second-hand books. Now, this is also environmentally friendly. You guys all got books at home, right? Your Harry Potter, you throw away. Don't. You give it to me and I sell for $2, $3. I make the money. And at the same time, I'm creating job for our mother and child. By the way, they're all paid, right? So I got five hospitals now, number six is coming up, where mother and child working together. And I tell you, the transformation of mother is fantastic. When they first started, they looked very tired. Now they make up, they go for afternoon tea with the mother. It's, it's a real fantastic transformation. After that, another project I have is Dignity AI. AI. This is called impossible. Why? I'm trying to create jobs for people who are homebound paralytic. How do you create jobs? Thanks to James Cameron, I got an idea for Avatar. You know, you don't show the Avatar, right? The guy paralyzed, he goes around. So the same idea, why don't we use robot? And the idea of the robot, come on, you guys have robot spraying sanitizer. Robot are a lot smarter than that. And you use robot with a funny looking cartoon face. Why not bring a disabled person to run the robot? Now it's operating in Dignity Kitchen Singapore, Dignity Hong Kong uh, as receptionist. It's now running at higher regency Sartin in Hong Kong as a concierge. So we check up, the robot will go to you, tell you where you're from, how are you today? Then in Singapore, it's going to start in the hospital in January, in Kempong Hospital, because as reception, and robots are fantastic. But the person is far, far away at home operating a robot. And by the way, this will only work because of 5G and Android. I know, I designed the program. Don't buy iPhone. iPhone is crap. They can't even download any app. Android is very good. Seriously, it doesn't have to pay anything. <laughs> Sorry, but I know you guys carry iPhone. The, the, the fourth project is Dignity Farm. The world is talking about urban farm, correct? Where are the farmers? And if you work with autistic children, they're fantastic. I got two operating my farm now. It's a small farm. And I tell you, 8 o'clock water the plant, 9 o'clock weeding. They know. They just standardize the whole thing. And they, are, they can take, they love because they can see the plant growing, you know? And that is what's so very remarkable. Then we have a con we have started a dignity kitchenette for mental patient, right? So all these jobs create over a lot of jobs. The third principle is to integrate back to society. And by the way, everywhere you go in ASEAN, hawker center, food court, everything is an integration center. Everybody needs to eat. That's all, right? And by the way, food court and hawker center cater to the masses. And the fourth principle is inclusion, getting society to extract them. And what I did is I go 
it's quite quite interesting now. I what I do is I go to nursing home. You know, a lot of people go nursing home to enter, to entertain the elderly. Don't bring them out. So what I did is I bring elderly out and I give them a city tour and come to Dignity Kitchen. Then I get corporate to come in. I get student to come in. You get the bait to catch the fish, right? Everybody loves to entertain elderly. So in a place like Dignity Kitchen, it's a complete ecosystem. You got the disabled people cooking, the elderly eating, and corporate pay. So the four basic mental handle people are physical, mental, social, intellectual, all in one go. Youngest is seventeen, oldest is eighty-seven. We take on people who are terminal illness. You know that they didn't die one year; they survived five years, six years. So as of today, we train and place over two thousand Singaporean. Right in Hong Kong, it's about eighty-nine people so far. Right. Uh, in terms of elderly coming for lunch, we've done over two hundred and sixty thousand every single year. We've done that because when I grow old, I hope you guys, young one, bring me up for a holiday or something like that. Right. That's what it's all about. So, by the way, it's a profitable business. It sustained itself even last year at COVID nineteen. We earn money not by one revenue. We sell food. We own delivery. We organize event. We train people, and all this generate a million dollar business so far. Of a three million dollar business within Hong Kong and China, so basically we are job creator for people with differently able people. That's all. Good story. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sing Chun. Uh, very interesting. Uh, we shall not dwell on the mobile phones uh, at this point in time. Uh, <laughs> But um, you know, thank you for sharing with us, and I, I like this thought that you had about transformation. You know, even as you skill them, you give them the confidence. You are transforming them, yeah, so that they can be accepted where they are. 